Today we're going to look at some thoughts on Scottish Mortgage. It's lost over half of its value from its recent peak, so does that now make it a buy? Well, the advantages of Scottish Mortgage are that it has a good long-term performance record and it's been early backers of companies like Amazon and Tesla. It has low fees at 0.32% and no performance fee, and if you're in doubt, always go for a low fee. It's a flagship fund. That means it'll get a lot of management attention. It's very large in size, so there's likely to be a lot of meetings about it to try and turn around its performance and guarantee good returns to its shareholders. Finally, it has a wide remit across different countries and sectors. So it's looking at growth, but in the widest possible terms. Unfortunately, when we look at the top 10 holdings of the fund, they're all down uh, as at the 20th of May. And so this isn't so good that absolutely everything in the top 10 is showing a negative return. And some are showing some quite steep negative returns. So the disadvantages of the fund would be that when James Anson left as manager in April 2022, he positioned the fund at arguably its most riskiest, with the highest percentage of unquoted equities at around 30%, and quite a lot of Chinese investments, which had many political and regulatory risks. The investment trust is currently at a discount to net asset value, and sometimes that's even gone to double digits on a intraday low. Unfortunately, because the trust has 30% unquoted assets, those assets might be subject to a further write down and it's not clear exactly how much of a bargain the trust actually is with respect to the discount to net asset value if further write downs do indeed occur. The fund, the trust is not suited to high interest rates or high inflation, as many holdings only have meaningful positive cash flows many years into the future. So what they don't tell you about the fund. How many companies are pre-revenue? How many companies are loss making? What's the PE ratio of the fund and how has it changed over time? Now, arguably, if the fund has profitable and loss-making companies, and it doesn't really have a PE ratio, but it could look at a segment of the fund and monitor how that PE ratio is changing, and then you get a good idea as to whether the fund was good value or poor value. What about for holdings that it's had and then completely exited, what's been the win ratio or the average gain or loss on those holdings? So it's difficult to assess the true riskiness of the fund and how earnings growth or changing PE multiples have affected fund performance. Now, unfortunately, this is largely true of all investment trusts. So should I buy? Well, first of all, consider your investing objectives. How does it fit with the rest of your portfolio? Are you a patient investor? Can you withstand lengthy drawdowns? Are you able to withstand high volatility? There's been a bit of a bounce in the last couple of days, um, but we don't know whether that will continue or not. So here if we look at a longer term share price and discount graph, we can see that arguably in the sort of six pound range, then the fund would represent quite good value and it's kind of gone back to its pre-COVID levels and that could be a very sensible buying point. We've got a small uptick in May, but we have had those in the past, and the trend is still downwards in terms of the share price. In terms of the discount, it has spiked at yeah, around 10%, and when it's done that in the past, it has rebounded, so that might be a useful sign. So if you're feeling bullish about Scottish Mortgage, then arguably, the timing is pretty good at the moment. My thoughts are that price does not always equal value. So if the price is halved, it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually better value because the underlying holdings have lost value. A V-shaped recovery in, I suppose, both the economy as a whole 
and in the price of Scottish mortgage seems to me to be unlikely. It's often what leads you into the downturn is not the same thing as what leads you out of the downturn. In my view, this is a satellite holding only. It should never be considered as a core holding due to its volatility. And finally, uh, Scottish Mortgage say that a small number of companies create the majority of stock market returns regardless of the prevailing economic conditions. And that's been true recently with the FANG stocks. I'm not so sure if we look further back into the past. And Scottish Mortgage say they aim to identify these companies and then when they find them, support them for as long as possible. So that means they'll buy uh, when it's private equity, when it's unquoted, and then hold it through the flotation until they see full value being realized. And that's actually quite a unique position that uh, hardly any other trust can say that they pursue. So I hope you've liked the video. Please subscribe, give it a like, let me know your comments. What do you think about Scottish Mortgage? And if you want to contact me, I'm Ian Shadrach at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Ian Shadrach.